the BIM uh, CMMS integration is a little vague term or definition of, uh, of uh, deliverable. There is many ways that this can happen. Um, I mean, all the way from um, integrating the native authoring tools like, uh, like it was mentioned before with the CMMS, one direction or bi-directional, uh, or like taking the, like the, an Excel or, 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 or a Kobe and uh, import it into uh, CMMS, uh, using Navis Works as a viewer for other certain use cases, or even with tools like uh, Ecodomos or UBIM uh, that, that act as middleware and, and, and like provide other flexible uh, alternatives. So <clears throat> the first thing we need to do is to define which are those, uh, those workflows. So what is uh, the, the facility, the owner, facility managers are gonna do with it? What are the interesting, whether they wanna trigger a work order from the model like uh, Lori was showing or like seeing um, space utilization within the 2D or understanding a system in the 3D. Uh, and once we have, I mean, the different use cases or workflows that they are interesting to, we, we have to focus on the architecture. Not, there is not one way to, to put it together. I don't know, things like where would the main data source leave? Uh, what will be bi-directional, what we what will not? And uh, <clears throat> how, we, how are we gonna maintain the data and so forth? And then at the end, it's um, like, it's a matter of mapping. Right, there is assets in the CMMS, and there is assets or three D objects in the in the BIM model, and, and systems and rooms, and, and it's a matter of it's just a mapping exercise. <clears throat> our or our focus at UBIM is one is gather the right information, so that we have a trust uh, trustworthy database, and uh, provide this two D three D capabilities uh, uh, to the CMMS systems sort of an, an enhancement. In terms of gathering, we have a UBIM information management um, a module which allows us to structure the, the, from the attributes to the type of documents that we want to assign to the different type of systems or assets, and then different ways to collect that, that data uh, and export from the BIM um, native authoring tools like import from Kobe or manual entry, and then about certain validation tools. And once we have that good, uh, reliable database uh, populating the CMMS through many of the uh, tools that the CMMS is, for example, the one that Lori was mentioning that allows to integrate uh, with IBM Maximo. And um, on the other aspect, providing 2D, 3D capabilities through, through our uh, through our viewer, which is basically web browser um, agnostic viewer, and uh, that basically takes uh, as, agno as agnostic in terms of the of the BIM authoring tool it takes. It's basically for things like uh, it helps you with location graphically, right? Like the Google Maps effect and uh, visualize like like graphical reporting on things that you can have in a list in a CMMS or understand a system or what is an upstream or downstream effect of shutting down a valve, um, et cetera. Like, I don't know, here I have like a pre few print screens how like you look for where is that diffuser that's too noisy and it, you can find where it is or like, I don't know, your pending work orders or like uh, BMS alarms on the objects within the model or understanding a system and so forth. I'm gonna jump to this. This is like typical um, objects that, and, and where we take them like from spaces, uh, uh, rooms and, and, and assets and that, that goes, how that goes into UBIM and, and into the, the CMMS if we are handling that, um, that data management process. And uh, finally, I just want to show a case study of uh, an integration of UBIM with uh, IBM Maximo in a healthcare facility. Uh, I don't know that video, I guess. There you go.
During the design and construction process, we knew that we didn't want the typical results at the end of the job where we got a truckload of drawings and spec books and manuals that would just fill up a room and be very hard for our folks to go through. So we were looking to take our building information models and all of the 3D modeling we had done during the project and bring that into the ownership realm. I'm Adam Troidel, Construction Manager with Maine General Medical Center. We completed the Alphonse Center for Health in late 2013. It's a 640,000 square foot new regional hospital here in Augusta, Maine. Uh, we have 192 inpatient beds. We used integrated project delivery with a very large team on this project. That included Robbins and & Morton and H.P. Cummings on the general contracting side, SMRT and TRO Jung Brannan on the architecture and engineering design, and then UBIM as our BIM to FM partner. The UBIM team was great to work with. We had a number of different data sources, both in 3D models and in equipment data that we had to integrate and bring together. We had up to 10 modeling softwares from Revit for architectural and structural, AutoCAD MEP, and then a variety of other fabrication softwares that the contractors use. So we needed to bring all those together and then capture all of the data that was either in the models or in spreadsheets or handwritten in some cases, pull all that into one final model in UBIM so that we have one viewer that our guys can look at uh, that seems to them like it's a seamless you know, one source product. We wanted a 3D viewer so we could dispense with the drawing portion of that and then we also wanted to integrate that with our asset management system so we could track work orders and maintenance histories of all the items within the building. So we went with UBIM and their team. Very easy to use solution we felt would be able to go out to our frontline staff and get in the hands of the, the electricians, the mechanics, the plumbers, actually use at the point of work and save a lot of steps from going back and looking at those paper documents in the old way bring things out into the field digitally so they can view everything in the building in 3D as well as look up the assets. We expect with this system to really increase efficiency and you know therefore save operational dollars. So based on the national study data normalized to this size of building that we have here, we expect to save anywhere between $185,000 and $225,000 a year. And that'll also really be borne out in the efficiency of the staff. So I think I'm over my, my time, so. <laughs> So, so, so we're going we're gonna to cut this off because we're a little over. The good news is we got an owner to speak. So um, we want to thank Axel.